pasture, uh, log farms, really big, and uh, there are just a uh, few people manage it. So, uh, what, com uh, what comes to my mind is uh, I want to be like build a system that uh, uh, which can monitor the farmland information, like climate information, on the pasture farm, and uh, there's a uh, also kind of a uh, soil pH value, uh, all kind of uh, farmer needed data uh, to help farmers to like grow their crops uh, actively. So in my group project, I'm going to uh, build a, a, an automated uh, agriculture system uh, with uh, Node.js and MongoDB database. Users uh, can monitor their farming information uh, with this uh, uh, web application and uh, they'll be able to, there'll also be some kind of automated like irrigation system and uh, uh, climbing uh, climate uh, 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 so people can like change the temperature or the greenhouse if they uh, think it's uh, from the data. Uh, so uh, my project uses uh, MangoDB to store uh, farmland information such as weather. Uh, Edge value of the soil and uh, data. Uh, we use O server to receive the data from the Beagle Black. I do have a Beagle Black pro on it, uh, but there's a need of the same system on that. So probably I'm going to use uh, the Beagle to mock data. Mm -hmm. It might be interesting if you could find a simple like cheap just one. Yeah, just one, just to show that interaction. It, it, it can retrieve the data. From yeah, the humidity sensor, temperature sensor, or something. I think you can probably get some yeah, yeah, yeah. really cheap, you know. And yeah. it doesn't matter if it isn't all that accurate. Just. Mm, then, uh, uh, we use uh, application delivered, uh, delivered project. Uh, Angular JS. I haven't used the logging, but uh, I think using the MongoDB uh, logging for me is probably for that. Uh, I use uh, like application. Uh, I would think Mongo would have a module you could load that yeah, would do most yeah, of that for you. Probably Express has all that stuff in it. I don't yeah. know. Uh, the big old black is uh, a service to uh, communicate with the people. This is the structure diagram for, uh, for my project. Uh, for server side, I'm using the same database uh, with JS uh, and uh, first the sensor retrieve the data uh, from, from the sensor and then uh, and the Beagle for service and to the server, uh, server store the data. And uh, on the client side, I'm using Node.js to uh, start the web application so the uh, OD user can enter in uh, whatever the data we have and uh, do some sort of action there uh, to the data. Actually, uh, the so the client is a browser. Yeah, yeah the browser. Okay. Yeah. And so the controller is really uh, supplied by Angular. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then there's uh, some introduction to Node.js. I think uh, everybody is uh, uh, pretty familiar with Node.js. Uh, Professor has a little bit of. Uh, to the uh, uh, server side, JavaScript uh, fork, and it helps uh, uh, the server to uh, read the uh, data. Uh, uh, it 
It helps uh, the tourist eye scripting and there's uh, uh, from VLA agent. Uh, it's a single just a uh, kind of pattern mo model for uh, oh. it's a single thread uh, pattern model to kind of have a loss of. So it's doing the yeah. server processing on a single thread. Yes. <laughs> Next one is a, a MongoDB, like a, a memory source, uh, cross platform, uh, and also classified as a NoSQL database. So then, uh, once you like compare the SQL database with uh, is the MongoDB use uh, NoSQL database in a Data for NoSQL, data for NoSQL database is more flexible than the SQL database. And uh, easier for, for, for the data to from there uh, to, for the NoSQL database to retrieve. Uh, for the SQL database, uh, all have the same property, but uh, uh, the flexibility for a SQL uh, for a SQL is uh, less flexible than the NoSQL. Uh, so next is uh, uh, there's a real for uh, uh, MongoDB database by using yes. So as we can. First, actually, you can for the, the remote thing. Uh, JavaScript create the database and very easy to put uh, collection into the data. So that won't be the problem for us to create the data and uh, from the all, all these things. Next is the AngularJS. Uh, it's uh, the structural framework for uh, for dynamic web application, and uh, it uh, it's actually a framework for an extension for the browser. Uh, and it it can have syntax. Make a make a some connection and uh, let the user uh, can connect action by action with the uh, web page. Uh, and he emphasized this is a document object model very efficient with the goals. Uh, with the goal of improving uh, ten. Next is the latest model. Uh, this is the the flow maybe a flow chart for for the Angular JS. Uh, it allows a web page and then when the web page will be application model uh, module the modules configured with uh, routes that routes execute the Loads the video and the uh, controller. The service creates create create an inject to the controller. After that, the video is added to the web page, and the uh, finally the scope responded to the video and the controller. This is the project test uh, version. Collect the data from the containers. Ready. Let me see. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to go to 
mock data uh, and the preferred position is to Uh, real-time data to edit MongoDB through the REST service. Do you, do you come from a farming background? So you don't know much about farming at all, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so this is an interesting project and, you know, a really good place to apply these kinds of technologies. And there is work going on in this area, you know, I know a little bit about it. Both my grandfathers were dairy farmers, and my father was, uh, you know, in the ag business and stuff. So, uh, got a lot of background. I think it would be interesting uh, to look a little bit at, for some references about automating the ag business and providing some of those references you know, before you upload your slides okay. uh, would be interesting for us and probably interesting for you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been do, doing some research about that, but uh, they're using like too fancy stuff, like drones or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and you want to keep this, you, we need to keep this yeah, relatively but, uh, straightforward. Yeah, they're like getting like more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my uh, students, one of the students in um, OOD uh, is uh, starting a case project with a company called Ag Models. And they are, they, they are doing some of what you're talking about doing here. So it might be interesting to talk, talk to them. Send me an email about it and I'll get you two guys talking back and, okay. back and forth. Uh, displaying this uh, farming information uh, on a Google map. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, use the Google map API. Uh, all kind of all kinds of indicator to, uh, on, on the Google map. So it looks like the map to display data. We might have soil PHP yeah, yeah, yeah. views kind of over fields and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And temperature and humidity and another interesting thing is nitrogen runoff because farming operations tend to pollute rivers and, and ponds and streams near them, cause real problems with with because they're fertilizing using a lot of nitrogen. If they use too much, it flows into the waterway and causes real problems. Eutrophication. Hmm? Eutrophication. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because there's the uh, algae blooms that yeah. eat all the oxygen. And, yeah. So the map, uh, I'm going to use the map as a heat map as a or, okay, all the summer go to see this. And uh, here's the automated system. So Can you go back to the previous slide? So I don't know whether you're so here in something like this to display farming information on a real map, blah, blah, blah. You want to be a little more specific. You know, so this is, think of this presentation as you're presenting to a venture capitalist and you're asking them for money to fund your development. Uh, okay. And uh, you gotta have, it's gotta be more than hand waving. It's gotta be some pretty specific stuff. And so the answer is, the, 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 the issue is that we wanna say, here's what I really intend to do. So just the next, not tons and tons of detail, but it's just the next click down. So I'll show, a geo map of PHP levels, okay. geo map of humidity, you know, something like that. And uh, toward the end, you want to say, here's the takeaway. Here's what, why this is interesting, why it ought to be funded, okay? 
Uh, yeah, here's the potential return for you. You know, we're not obviously going to say, it, but that's the that's the potential model of this presentation. You know, you're you're presenting to a venture capitalist, and you, you got to give you want to give them real reasons why uh, you ought to fork over some dough for Try to make them think quickly into uh, yeah, yeah. That is, it's not shouldn't be a sales job. You're not trying to do it, you know, oh, yeah. indirectly, but. You're really trying to, you know, give enough detail so that they really know what you're going to do. And, you know, you're doing the right thing here, but just a quick you know, more detail. A little bit detail. Yeah. I'm saying this not just for you, but for everybody, because... Like most of formula, formula has uh, has certain system, uh, but not a new thing for them. Like they just sprint uh, every time, specific time of a day, started and uh, from the farmland, and uh, there is another. Uh, System uh, I wanted to do is the temperature control of a greenhouse. Uh, so once the, it's pretty much I wanted to do it in the automated way. So once the temperature of the greenhouse uh, answer in the greenhouse, be back to the to the, the server, then the server will automatically get it set it back to adjust the temperature. Not, not by the user, but also user can uh, adjust temperature by themselves. But uh, they mostly, mostly they, they just uh, server will do do the job uh, with with the JavaScript. If is the notification to farmer if there's a there's an emergency, uh, such as like when. Uh, or like go so if you buy or go to go so obviously you can just take off uh, that part of uh, part of soil that, that part of place uh, uh, it should uh, uh, collect uh, any name sensor uh, information Server and uh, we might do a little bit further data analysis. Uh, so my my mental model so far, uh, I want to do like it collect uh, it collects like three years weather information, and it's gonna uh, uh, do that to make the farmer to get the, the pattern of the weather, so they they, they will be able to. Some uh, and, uh, approach to their farmland uh, according to the weather pattern. So I'm not. I'm not sure how practical that is because we can't predict weather reliably for more than three days in advance. Yeah. But you know, uh, for example, keeping records of uh, so let's suppose that you. Uh, a particular crop needed a you know a given pH uh, pH level, and so you have variations that you're measuring over there, and so you've got the statistics about the deviations from the desired. And now, if you if you record the yield, the crop yield, you know versus that, now you you know that's giving you information about whether uh, you know. Tiger control would be effective for you to get uh, more crop yield. Oh, okay. So, uh, the team, uh, I probably need some help because uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not a like specific farmer. 
I, I don't have any uh, farming background, so we need a and uh, my idea for me is I didn't merge set up the database and uh, uh, connect it with the digital landscape. Uh, of course, I need to put a put on the oh, sensor to work. Uh, uh, the digital and the database will be connected by that time. Uh, after that, I'm going to do my front end the web application. Uh, I uh, mid April. Uh, at the end of April, I'm going to design our. Uh, Are you going to finish debugging the whole the system by <laughs> <laughs> by, uh, by the time you do your final presentation? Hope so. <laughs> yeah, your schedule is a little coarse. It's not really telling you, you know, schedule, the idea of a schedule is it's going to help you stay out of trouble because it'll tell you, you know, so what you've got is you've got this nice big long stretch of time at the beginning, you know, and then as you get toward the end, it gets tighter, 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 you know, more and more and more to do. So you, it's like your plan is doing this on effort. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, so now is the end of February, mid-March, set up MongoDB and the test database. Uh, uh, end of March, uh, BeagleBone is tested and integrated into the system and, uh, you know, so I don't think you can start building the web, you know, if you wait until mid-April to start building the web application, well, I mean, you probably I mean, get done. I probably, yeah, I started by the end, start my web application by the end of, uh, after I finish the, 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 the database okay. stuff and then, yeah, this, the, there's no, like, this is the deadline for, actually, the deadline for, for okay. Not start with. So web application complete. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> You're afraid to commit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with a schedule, you got to be brave, because it's there really not only to tell people what you're going to do, but it's for yourself. So you want to set. You know, ideally, you want to set tough but realistic goals for yourself at a fairly fine-grained level, because if you don't do it, if you don't have a schedule item, you know, maybe once a week, or at least once every two weeks, then you're going to be cruising along thinking everything's great, and all of a sudden, wham, you, just, you say, oh my gosh, I got three weeks before my final presentation is due, and I've only done one-third of the project. So I think you want a little more detail in the schedule. Um, it feels like there is a distinct things uh, you want, you want. Uh, my, request, my request is really, uh, it seems like uh, uh, this project is not for a specific farm project. Uh, it's very general. Uh, it's not like for growing uh, uh, some kind of crop. It's for generally uh, farming. Yeah, 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 it's it's more like uh, for environment uh, monitoring and uh, uh, for uh, for farmers and uh, give them. from their farmland uh, so actually they they are still the the major force for, for the farmland 
uh, all kinds of data from from the web application uh, doing the action for the for the uh, non specific on kind of off or I feel like it really comes down to whether uh, why you want it to uh, farm specific because it, you can uh, very well make it a set of tools for uh, collecting data based on location and uh, visualizing them or, or, or an, an, uh, analyzing them. There's no uh, special purpose for it to farm. That, uh, that's my. Uh, I want it for farming information. I did a little bit research for that, but I think it comes down like finally the farming. It would be like more uh, interesting and uh, let's say sure. There's a lot of interest in automating agricultural systems and a lot of need. For that for environmental reasons and and the profit margins in farming is going down and down and down you got to be you know more and more accurate uh, accurate yeah I agree with Gao's comment um, you know it might be uh, profitable for you to take a slightly smaller scope it's an interesting problem a lot of work going on here but uh, for example, greenhouses are a much more controlled environment. They have shades that can be come down automatically to uh, to control the amount of sunlight. Some uh, flowers, for example, roses, uh, are very sensitive to sunlight. If they get too much, they die. They wilt. So you know, there's shades that come down, and there's uh, watering systems that are running all the time, and uh, nutrient drips and stuff like that. So. That model um, is a smaller environment that's a little yeah, yeah, easier yeah. to think about and get your arms around. Okay, you might you might take something like that as a model. Um, you, you know, you're going to be able to demo a monitoring some particular physical thing, right? Temperature, humidity, right? And you, but you don't, you know. When you're done, you're in danger of saying, okay, I've got this system that can collect data and it can talk to the sensor and it can activate stuff. Here it is, go do something with it. <laughs> okay. But if you have a more circumscribed application, like, you know, greenhouse, for example, and you could build a little model that says, okay, when I turn on the heaters, you know, it, that it grows exponentially, you know, from where it was to here. You can build a little model, you know, and you've got external temperature variations and stuff like that, and show that your system could monitor it and, and take some action, like that. You got to be careful because it would be awful easy to turn this into a project you'd never get done with. But you're, you know, Joe's point is well taken. You're, you're, you're in danger of saying, I got this nice set of tools. You know, maybe we could do something with it. When I started, like, preparing the Why don't you talk to Naga? Naga is the student who, uh, I'll give you his email. I'll get, I'll get you two in touch. He's working with the case project, and they're doing this. They're they're monitoring nutrient stuff that's being, uh, you know, being uh, inserted into bins and things like that. And uh, uh, they do uh, modeling of nutrients versus production and dairy cattle and stuff like that. So, you know, just to get a better idea of what people are really doing right now might be. Okay, so uh, uh, tonight, why don't you upload your uh, slides? I, have you uploaded yet? 
Uh, I submitted to the, uh, the only uh, college server. Good. I, I have to transport it from there to the. And I did for. Okay. Uh, did you did you check? Uh, uh, what, did those show up? By the time I checked, it was up. It was there. Okay. Good. So uh, I would like everybody, when they present the evening after they present, to upload. Just upload to the college server. There's a 775 link if you go to the, you know, the, you know, how you uploaded projects to, to uh, yeah, just upload it. And then it's up to me to uh, move it over. So I don't remember. Uh, should I send you an email? No, uh, just upload it. Uh, I'm drowning in email. I don't want to. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Avi and uh, Vishnu, you're up. Good afternoon everyone, I am Avi and today we are going to present the two issues of the virtual display system. So Can you concept... talk just a little louder Avi? I have old ears and I don't hear very well. Uh, the primary concept of our application is developing a display system that would render multiple views. By view I mean you can have a webcam view or documents like for Word, sketchpads, text and also the data from repository all in a single web page so that user can have uh, interaction with all these kinds of work with them uh, simultaneously. Like they don't have to keep switching between uh, web pages. They will have everything uh, displayed uh, on a single web page. The goals of our application, like what we aim to achieve here is, first we are going to develop a web page. That would, uh, that would be dynamic, like uh, the, it, this would be the default template of our application. It would have uh, multiple elements already uh, displayed there, like all the views, document views, webcam, the data from repository, and also the Skype windows, everything would be uh, already present so that user can use either this default template or he can edit this template by uh, deleting the elements that he don't want. Further, we are going to develop a menu so it would consist of all these elements like which can be added, like document view, uh, webcam view, and everything would be displayed in this uh, component menu. And it could be uh, added by dragging and dropping to the template. So user can uh, add as many elements as he want and then use this page as per his need. Then, Further, we aim to save this current uh, workspace of user, that is, uh, the current web page, the session of the current web page would be stored if user is closing it in the same state, like if he has dragged some elements to some different location or he's resized it to a different, uh, like different length and width, or he's put some elements, like two, three elements of same views, then same state would be saved in some format, like XML maybe, if we haven't decided on it yet. And then when he further loads it again, uh, the same state would be retrieved uh, for the user to use it in the way that he left. Going further, after the session and everything is done, yeah, uh, these are like the primary two functionality of the web application that we're developing. This is the basic layout of uh, uh, what our web page would look like. This is the default, like this is actually worked on template. The user has uh, used this uh, document view, he's also resized the canvas view and he's dragged some elements uh, like to a different place on the entire template. And this is our uh, component menu that is displaying all the elements that are available to add. We can uh, 
we'll keep adding some more over here. So yeah, this is going to be the basic web page that we are uh, aiming. Uh, talking about the milestones, uh, firstly, we are going to create a template and a menu, a default template and a menu for this node. Then we'll make this template dynamic. That by dynamic, I mean uh, we make it editable so that it can have the functionality of adding new elements or maybe deleting the ones that are already there. Then we'll add the document and media view. Documents, uh, we are aiming for PDF and Word currently. And by media, we we'll try to add audio and video medias and things. I'll back up and ask you a question. So when you say making the template dynamic, are you talking about being able to drag and drop stuff around the screen? Yeah, uh, okay. uh, dynamic in the sense, uh, drag and drop from the menu and also which is existing, we'll be able to delete them. Uh, then we'll try to add the chat box and the canvas view. Canvas is going to be the sketch pad which would allow user to uh, draw uh, various uh, graphics and all. And uh, after that, we... Could you go back to the previous slide? My impression was that uh, everything in the rectangle on the right, the big rectangle on the right, is canvas view. This one? Oh. Okay. okay. Everything the in the big box, okay. because what a canvas does is it allows you to put things at this court, this X and Y coordinate, this X and Y coordinate, this X and Y coordinate. So if you're going to drag and drop parts around, that really that whole thing wants to be a canvas. We, here, what we did was we made this a web page and workspace, and the canvas itself we made it a separate element. So, so you you intend the canvas to be a place you draw on and draw pictures and stuff like a yeah. yeah. So uh, you may well use canvas technology, but I think you need a canvas, an HTML canvas for that entire big rectangle box. That's how you're going to get stuff to move around. You know, you can't use. Uh, you don't want the browser to flow stuff around. You know, somebody carefully sets it up and squeezes, and all of a sudden everything floats around. They're going to be really annoyed at you. But if you use a canvas, it says at this point, and if you close the window, it just truncates that view, and you know, it might go out of view. But it's always there. Okay. We'll try to add the repository. By repository, I mean we are going to set up a database and we'll put some data in that. And then when we query this database via our SDN page, all the results would be displayed on our And uh, the next step would be the session store and restore. This is the this is the saving of the current state of the page when the user Further, we'll try to enhance the UI. We try to make it more user friendly and more like uh, to look at more better by applying a lot of CSS, a lot of uh, JavaScript also. Then the last step would be our ambitious goals. Which are? Which are it? Sorry about that. Uh, the ambitious goals, uh, we have defined three currently. First is the collaboration model. Uh, with collaboration model, we are trying to achieve, like the page would, the main page would be a server page and multiple users would be able to connect to it. And when they are saving some template, when they're working around some template and saving it, so all the, the data of all the users would be uh, like stored on this web page, this main server web page so that they can, sh uh, Multiple users can, uh, different users can check what the other users are doing. How, like, they can use those templates also. And, uh, like this is a kind of a, uh, this is basic data sharing in multiple users. We haven't really worked a lot on it, but this is what we try to achieve. Those are very ambitious goals. Yeah. But can you go back to your uh, your step chart? So. You've got a mix of things that are pretty difficult and things that are pretty easy, and some of the easy things are toward the end. So restore, a session store and restore are almost trivial. And I would do them right at the beginning. So what I would do is I would lay out my canvas 
And I would use little colored divs. No content, it's just colored divs. And get to the point where I could drag them around, okay, resize them, and then shut it down and see them come up. Okay, no real content, just colored divs. But that is what is the beginning of the real functionality. Now you can add one thing at a time, replace this yellow div with a text file, replace, you know, and so you can kind of pick them up and put them down and make as much progress as you can. I think um, adding a digital Visio turns out to be really difficult. Interesting, you know, you'd really like this virtual display to have that kind of capability, but uh, really hard to do. So, you know, I would move that up into my ambitious goals, okay, and expect to make a little bit of progress in that direction, but maybe not a whole lot. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and some of these are uh, adding the media view because of HTML5 is really pretty straightforward. They give you the tools to do that. That's cool. Uh, uh, adding repository, I, I, my guess is adding Skype is fairly straightforward, but it, it depends on the tools that Skype gives you and whether they really want you to put their Skype, you know, their Skype view into your web page. Maybe they don't, and so they'll make it hard for you to do that. I don't know. But um, repository, you know, fair amount of work. So, you know, I would kind of order them in a, you know, so that the more difficult things are toward the end. And, uh, you know, I'll be happy on Friday. We can sit down and talk a little bit, and I can help you order these. But, uh, but I think I would definitely take Session Store and Restore and move it uh, as the second item and get drag and drop to work, and then try to get resizing to work. You know, that, if you've done that much, all of a sudden things start to get interesting. And as soon as you, if you did nothing more but add a couple of things into it, you know, we could smile at the end. But, right? Even for Skype, it's not very simple. Currently, just provides for API. So it's yeah, very easy I don't to know. Yeah. We were trying. It to would be nice. Yeah. It, it's one thing. It would be really nice to have it, but you know. Not at the end of the world if you don't, but as long as you got some, you know, you can you can have video here, you can have a document view here, you know, PDF view. The second we put is a UML diagram. This the way it gives you a, a simple menu, not too many components. And then he's trying to draw something. And we try to match it with the element that is already there. This is yeah, one of the Somebody two years ago tried to do that and got and that's all they were doing in their project, and they got three quarters of the way to that goal. So you know, again, Friday I can help you sort out what's easy and what's not. But yeah, you're being ambitious, that's good. Thank you so much. And you would discover, you know, as you got into it, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? So, you know. I got this idea of human diagrams only after referring to that project that you Yeah, had. yeah. It's cool. I, a great idea for this, you know. Yes, great idea. It makes it really useful, but maybe something that you aren't going to get done this semester. Possibly. Well, you know. If you get the core stuff going now, that gives you the opportunity to try working on some of that harder stuff. And then, and so we try to add the charts, the different uh, data charts like pie charts, and bar, bar graphs. Possible if it's going to be easier than the other two, then we try. To the technologies that we are using is the HTML5 and CSS for the development and designing of the CSS. JavaScript is going to help make the web page functional, like adding various events of uh, dragging and dropping, sizing, getting used from events or webcam streaming. 
which we are using to pass the data, the JavaScript and PHP as of now, uh, because Jenkins is like uh, easy to it's a text form of data which is parsable between. How are you saving the data? Are you are you saving it in a database or is it all just XML? The data is uploaded one, as in the uploaded files. Um. Um. You know, partly what resources does this view have, but also, uh, you know, maybe in real time where you're storing it and stuff like that. So for the real time storing, we are using currently PHP, but we are not sure. We might replace but this. PHP isn't saving anything for you. You're, you're using PHP talking to something like Mongo or or MySQL or. I didn't get your point. So we are asking about, for example, you know, the documents and stuff that we're going to put it in this page. It seems like there's a lot of storage involved. I mean, not necessarily, I don't think you're storing documents, but you're storing information about. Uh, we, are, we are thinking of taking the documents as I've discussed with you because uh, for, I don't know how it will be while persisting it to the XML and then getting it back. So if the producer is going to drag it and drop it into our web page, so the next time if we're going to, I mean, we, we use this uh, browser won't let us get the original path of the uh, file that's being transferred into the page. Yeah, but, but so there is in-memory storage and there's persistent storage, two different things, right? And, and you're talking, uh, we were talking about the persistent, you know, persisting this to an XML, having an XML template and uh, persisting to, you know, a, a specific instantiation of that XML template, that's fine. But when you're working, there's a lot of data, you know, Somebody pulls on fifteen documents in their, you know, on their view. That's How are you going to remember user. that? So, so, you know, uh, the user does refresh, and all of a sudden it's gone. You want the you, you don't want to have the user to pull everything back on again because somebody did a refresh. We are trying to store store those stuffs into our own uh, folder. Just I mean, take whatever uh, document that is going to put it in this. As of no, I mean, we're not sure about okay, the. Yeah, I think you're going to need a little bit of real time in memory storage, you know. and you can handcraft your own, or you could use Mongo, or you could you know use MySQL or whatever. Mongo is probably the easiest thing to do. We were like not sure about the PHP because if we use PHP, then definitely we'll have to. Yeah. Replacing PHP with a better thing. Yeah, using using Express instead of PHP and talking to Node, you know, might be a rational strategy. You might want to talk to you know, Arpit and Kono are using some of those technologies and having a quick chat the best, with them. Best thing is to use Node.js and Mongo.js. Yeah, nice. So many people have been doing that. That's the most easy. Was your mental model you were going to present today? Okay. I emailed you. Emailed you. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay. I didn't see your email yet. I only looked at my email first thing in the morning. So. Oh. I'm not at all surprised. So um, maybe we can chat for just a minute, uh, so I can, at the end of class, so I can get a better idea. Of what you're doing. Oh, yeah. I think having a conversation. You know, I would suggest you talk with me a little bit on Friday. I think maybe that would be a good idea. But more importantly, have a conversation with Canal and Arpit, who are using some of those technologies right now. sense. Yeah. I think you'll find a lot of core, you know, uh, uh, Mongo, ex uh, Node, uh, Mongo, and Express uh, take you a long way toward giving you the framework to do what you want to do. Uh, Express gives you, uh, you know, uh, web backend, you know, the processing, uh, server processing. A, you know, a lot of projects. You, you can go to Code Project, and you could probably find five projects that use uh, Node, Express, and Mongo to do something. You know, not too far removed from what you're doing, but you know, probably get them deeper. We were uh, planning on using Node.js for the collaboration thing, and also today, as we discussed with also, so maybe we are going to replace PHP with more. Yeah, in a way, you're doubling your, you know, both Node and PHP are processing 
uh, HTTP messages, okay? And so maybe what Express is just a module that sits on top of Node, okay? And so you only have one guy processing the HTTP messages of you know, Node. And... Okay. This is our component diagram, as I already described earlier. Like the document views, which we have PDF, Word, and Nerd TXT. Which perhaps uh, this is going to be the interactive uh, the canvas element, which would allow user to uh, draw the graphics. Further would be the webcam views, which would show the live stream webcam of the user uh, system. Uh, the Skype window, uh, we would try to implement it without the API, like a better version of uh, Skype that is running inside the view of the web page. Here views will display uh, simple text, audio, and video. And the repository data will try to query the database and then get the results and display it in a better format. If you had, uh, if you had, could you go back to that page just for a second? If you had webcam views, uh, there isn't that much added value adding Skype in. And so, and my guess is that it would be easier to insert webcam views. I'll bet there's, you know, very direct support for that. So, uh, I think Skype would be, a, you know, eventually down the road, version three, you might want to replace webcam with Skype or, or, or do both or something. But, but for your project, I think Skype is a really easy one to cross off the list. <laughs> So the prime functionality of our system would be first the dragging and dropping functionality for the elements from the menu also and uh, from the menu to the template and also in the template itself. Second would be the resizing uh, resizing feature that is we would allow these elements to be to uh, different widths and height and also location change feature that is inside the template also. Elements could be dragged anywhere for the specific max width of the canvas and multiple media type supports like uh, for uh, for document views we have uh, PDFs also, Word also and for other types of media like text, audio, video we try to include as many as possible and uh, saving the current session of uh, uh, the web page that is sa uh, saving the state into some uh, persistent format like PDF maybe and then restoring it on Further, uh, making the template editable, uh, completely dynamic. Addition and deletion would be supported, and template uh, would be uh, multiple elements could be added at any point of time to be removed. And uh, all the uh, media that user is trying to upload, like PDFs or or, or other media, so we try to save it in a specific database and also give him the list of what he's done, so that uh, it's easier to pull it and then put it on the web page again rather than. Upload. So these are the prime functionality that we are trying to achieve. So there's an interesting question. Uh, if you have Mongo, uh, you don't have to have a XML template. You can build your template in Mongo with JSON and let Mongo persist it. Another interesting question is, uh, maybe you could save your template as HTML. And, you know, as you're changing stuff in the document, uh, then persist that current state of the document as an HTML page, and all you do is just load that HTML page, you know, at startup. You know, that would be something worth exploring in your in your probing samples. Just a thought, you know. Um, if I can observe, it's more like user centric. So would it be more better if it's a desktop application? So that every user will be storing it on its own desktop. So, um, we don't need that so from a from a usability point of view, having it as a web application is really what you want because now everybody. You know, you don't have to put a whole bunch of messaging infrastructure in place. The web already did that for you. <laughs> okay, so 
I like doing it as a web application. I think it makes a lot of sense. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vishnu Prasad. So I'm going to uh, critical slides. So first, we'll see why is it useful. As she was telling you about the way it works uh, in Redmi, uh, that could have explained it better. So uh, having everything on the same web page and collaborating with it, using everything simultaneously, so that is the main concept of the uh, project. And uh, I think that's the main useful thing they can talk about in this. So, uh, so coming into the pages that we are going to discuss here. So uh, first, we uh, after discussing with the professor, we got I mean we got an idea of how to have them in the page. So one thing is the main I think the, the thing that will be like so good for the user is that having the components in a list, in the menu box, and then just letting him drag it and drop it, so that we have to take care of the backend stuffs like uh, creating a proper uh, interface for him to just work on after that, after just putting it there, and then uh, letting him put a lot of things of, and then there, is, there should be an, there, there should be no problem for him to just put a lot of things uh, between the user. That way, you know, with this model, it'd be really easy to get the display so crowded you can't see anything, and so with that little bar on the side, you can just, anything you're not using this instant, just pull over there, yeah. you know. I thought we'll have this close option too, so that whenever yeah, the sure. uh, but it might be nice just to park stuff. Yeah. You're not really closing; it's, it's saving all its data, and you just double click and it pops right back to where it was before, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, something cool. Basically, we're learning to uh, add stuff like as professor is saying that that is going to be giving the user a very good thing. We'll add everything in the course. So another one is the template web page. So this is like. Uh, or maybe a user like me who's like so lazy to just see where to put if, if, if he has something on the screen that is already there so he can just I'll just drag it and drop it there at that, that place so that it'll look quite uh, it'll look easy for me instead of me arranging everything I can use that page uh, so these are the two kinds of pages that we have in mind now and even even this page it will have everything that this page has it's just that extra uh, the Defined templates that we're going to have. I mean, defined uh, places. We are going to split the screen and then it will look like as if it is already having some form where we can, I mean, frames where we can just drop the stuffs. Uh, so, uh, based on our understanding as of now, I mean, we have designed this. So, it's like uh, the component means that any element that we are going to have in that menu, for example, the PDF or the document or the media or anything. So when it is going to be uh, selected from the list, it's like it's going to be dragged and then it's going to be dropped on the web page. So after dropping, it's just that already the, I mean, the place where he's dropping it, if, is, there a, is there a frame already? Is there something uh, to, uh, some component there to just enclose it already? If it is already there, then we are going to just upload the file and then put it on the frame. But uploading is the one that we have, we had the discussion on now. So uh, as of now, with my understanding, I mean, as I'm new to this uh, web development, I've never developed anything. So just now I was having this hands-on with uh, JavaScript. It was the first time I'm starting, I mean, it's the first time I'm doing it. So when I was checking, when we were checking for uh, the ways of uh, putting it into the page and then just making it persistent, uh, what, what we found, I mean, what I, I mean, I was just browsing and then told me that, oh, Okay, you can just use the PHP so that uh, I'll just show you that so that so I mean where with the page is like I just tried working on it. So we have uh, the list here. Maybe let me talk about as of now this if I'm dragging this PDF, so if I'm gonna drag it and then code it out here. So this is like a default template. As I mean, if I place it here, it, uh, our idea is to just have a frame popping up here and then just displaying it right away. So working on that, it's just the creation of new elements into the web page. So uh, this is already created web page. So I'm just putting it here. Uh, so I mean, so if I'm going to do this, what we need to have here is like uh, we tried uh, 
using the PHP, a basic PHP that helped us, I mean, that, that would help us to just uh, take this element. So this, I mean, whatever has been pasted here, we can just get to know the files that has been pasted into the document by using this line, which I referred. So, uh, so uh, data transfer files, I, I found it, in, it is it is like a default thing that is there in the web page. So this is helping me to just yeah. get the files and then the yeah. name of the files and everything. So uh, what we tried is like, you know, this file, be like taken and then it has to be sent to the JavaScript and then uh, I'll just store these files into a place where I know because I can just get the files I can't get the path of the file so I, if I'm gonna persist it and then send it again to the user next time if I'm gonna put it I can't just take it from any path outside so we just uh, we, we just created a so I mean a local server and then just stored it in there and then just when a persisting is, is if it's gonna happen then I'll just you know pop it out and then just you know put it as as you know it was before closing it so this is the the small idea that we have as of now uh, so so if php gave you a lot of functionality that made it easy to do some of this stuff that's all right you, know, you could use php uh, i don't think i would use both node and php so as of now we don't know i mean seriously i don't know what is node.js i have to look into I yeah. just started started it, so I couldn't get a lot of it as PHP. Yeah, you know, if if you're comfortable with PHP and it it lets you do all the things you want to do, I don't have an issue with that. You know, uh, Node and Express are nice because you can shape it however you you know you can do whatever you want to do. PHP has will have these canned stuff, you know, and if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, you'll fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. <laughs> try to get it to, but you know, if that if you if, if your judgment you think that's the the most direct way to get from where you are to where you want to get, use it. And forget you know, forget yeah. I told you I'm not a big fan of PHP, but you know that's okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, if it works for you, it's your show. Uh, so. Uh, this is just, I mean, this is directly if I have a frame, else if I don't have a frame, as we know, simple JavaScript, it helps us to create any element at any point of time programmatically to the web page and place it anywhere I want. Uh, so I'll just create the frame or any kind of, I mean, based on the media or any kind of the thing that's dragged, based on that I'll create whatever is necessary to just hold it and then I, we can just upload it and then open it in that. This is the basic idea of, uh, I mean, Idea of the, I mean, this is the outline of the project that we are trying to do. So, uh, as we told before, HTML and CSS. So, I'm gonna use it for the designing uh, of the pages and for the JavaScript. Uh, I mean, I personally find JavaScript very and a lot of <laughs> so. Uh, we I mean we are just going to do this resizing, dragging, dropping, and then you know touch and staring state, restoring the state. All these are the functions that I want to do. But uh, I mean the basic functional, I mean programming functionality is given by JavaScript. Uh, so it's like I can add the elements dynamically anytime I want. I can just if I want. So anything is possible with JavaScript. Uh, so the JSON. Uh, I mean, uh, I was just, as, as I was doing this uh, dragging and dropping, so I, I needed something to just move the data from, I mean, the data, PHP, as we know, that it, it does, that scripting helps us to get the data, as, as I told you from that functionality. So after getting it, how do I send it to JavaScript? I used uh, JSON for that. It was, it was easy for me to get that from uh, the PHP. So if, uh, as far so as you're I'm using an ActiveX, oh, I'm sorry, you're using a, a, a Ajax? Ajax, thank you. Yeah. You're using yeah. Ajax calls to. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as I mean, as far as I mean, as far as I went with the project, that's why I tried to do like limited number of stuff so that I'll be able to talk about that now because since I'm new to all these things. So, uh, and then PHP we used as we told before. It's I we just use it for uh, getting the uploaded data that uh, generally wanted. So. Uh, 
this is the as I as I showed you there. This is the page that you know I just created for the prototype. So I just wanted to uh, have a view of okay, how would it look just with a frame and then the heading for that. Uh, so I mean we can give a lot of CSS. I know that suggestion really aimed at everybody, not just you. So for for the kind of thing you're trying to say now. I think it would be better just to hand draw. Here's my concept, which you kind of had, you know, the you know, the the second slide or third slide. That really, that really was a good concept description. This sort of thing, when you're trying to implement that concept, is the sort of thing we do in the probes. Okay. Okay. Okay, but you know, you're not obligated in this opening presentation. You're obligated to talk about the technologies and your in your project, your goals, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, but. Yeah, this is the page and I just wanna put the. So uh, the challenge is uh, adding and removing the elements. Uh, as a beginner, I found it very difficult at some points when just for the placing of the items in the page with dynamic addition. That, that was like a trivial stuff for people who works, I mean, who was working with it, playing with it for a long time, but. Uh, in the initial stuff, it was a little bit of uh, pain, and uh, saving it into the XML, we are like, currently going with that, but uh, as, as Professor was explaining about all those things, like we should have them, uh, have the files for persisting it into, and then as addition, like we'll make it like an HTML file, because uh, they, they, they can make note of it, and then uh, uh, editable template structure. Uh, so editable is as, uh, I mean, before coming here, I had this notion of close, I mean, moving and then closing the frames that we already have on the uh, on the page. And then if you're gonna put more than one frame, I mean, I mean if you're gonna clap, I mean, put the frames, we'll make sure that the, I mean, I, I thought of making sure that, you know, uh, dividing the page into, uh, splitting it into different frames, I mean, different parts, so that if I'm gonna click it and drag it here, if I have a, I mean, if I have a frame here, if I, if I have a part here, We'll make sure that it'll just it'll be, it'll be displayed right here. I mean, just give a centralized view for that. That's what I thought. But uh, as Professor told us to make it with Canvas, Canvas gives us a lot of options. Uh, like uh, you know, if you're going to put it on the Canvas, like two things were going to be put in, put on the same place. We have uh, I think we have a function of uh, global composite uh, component that function like that will help us to just. Uh, programmatically say that yes, display this page over it, I mean display this frame over this frame. That will help us to uh, In the canvas there's a there's a Z index as well. So control. you can control the overlap and stuff like that if you want to. Well, there's lots of canvas is really nice for those things. Let me try to implement that in Canvas. I think that would be a better idea. Yes. A team is single and uh is that coffee or tea? Uh, coffee. I prefer coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought uh, Indian uh, uh, people from India mostly prefer tea. Yeah. So, uh, you can see if this is my side. So, sorry, we couldn't put the name, we didn't put the name. But uh, this is the first time I'm working with JavaScript, HTML for a project that is like. For me, it's a big project actually. Uh, so uh, I'm just trying to, I mean, trying to learn stuff from this. That's the view for me to take it. And uh, yeah, So I'm making sure that I just, I just start with the basics, with the lot of talk tape HTML, I'm starting with everything and then coding it so that I just have an idea of how to. We, we have divided the response, I mean, we have, we have it, I mean, we can change it later if we find it. So he's gonna take care of the template designs. Uh, whenever the template is changed, we'll make sure that uh, whatever changes is that made into the page, uh, design is like uh, apt to just be able to uh, look back at it all the time. All right. 
uh, I'll be uh, making this. I'll be working with the JavaScript so that uh, I'll, I'll just make the template dynamic as we call the closing opening, and then as Professor Sir just did, uh, putting minimizing it and then just dragging it out so that it can come out at any point. Those are the things that I'll be doing as I make the uh, dynamic. So and then uh, uh, she'll be working on the uh, repository implementation, which is that second coming after the first schedule, as we'll show the schedule. So uh, I'll be helping her in that. Uh, so we are going to take the inputs of everything that we just now and then we go. And then Sketchpad implementation. Uh, yeah, the Sketchpad we mean is that we'll have this canvas that will work as a norm. I mean, uh, as we told that the UML diagrams and everything, we're going to put it in the ambitious one. Because uh, in the beginning, we, we just want to make sure that, OK, like the user wants, will have a space, a uh, specific space inside so that he can just uh, make notes or he can just have uh, some kind of uh, I mean, as we as we study we'll just make some drawings and stuff and so I want I want to I want, want to make sure that he does all these things inside a sketchpad canvas so that that uh, will help him to have visual uh, I mean the visual effect will be there for him so that's the min it'll be a minimum one as like a text if I were doing this I would look for uh, sketchpad implementations that I could use because when you start, you know, you just draw, somebody draws a squiggly line. How am I going to represent that? Points, 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 not overwhelmingly difficult, but a lot of work to get it out so it really works. And how am I going to erase it? And how am I going to store that information? And you know, uh, so. I was just looking at these functions. I mean, I'm not sure whether it will work that efficiently. The they have these basic functions of line to move to stroke. I mean, that that was helping me to just get the sketchpad a little bit of you know uh, the functionality was there. I'm not sure about everything, but. It's really easy you know, to spend quite a while and your sketch pad, I can put a block here and I can put a circle there and I can put a diamond there and that's all I can do. So, uh, you know, just having this uh, container on the left for objects like, you know, uh, PDF documents and uh, uh, videos and stuff like that, that uh, and I can drag them anywhere I want, and the system will remember where they go, and I can resize them. That's a big thing, just that. You know, you got 90% you got of the, well, 80% of the useful capability with 10% of the effort. And so you really want to put that percent of the effort first that gives you this big payoff and the other stuff as you you know repository we all know there's quite a bit of work to get a repository up and going sketchpad you know a lot of work to get it up and going so and there are you know there's sketch pads around you can you know there's libraries and stuff but can I find one that'll fit into my you know smoothly into the other stuff that I have that's an open question yeah. so um, but anyway, we can talk a little bit about that offline. Collaborative stuff, like uh, the first one, as we talked about, that we'll work with the saving location and putting it. And then uh, uh, this is like never ending process as we page. Then the Skype in the implementation, we'll take it to the back as we're going we're gonna to look at the lib camp. And then the lib camp is like providing enough functionality. And then with that instead of uh, having this also in the same uh, uh, so according to the schedule I mean obviously we're going to change it now after this so uh, we want to complete the creation of template adding and removing the documents as we talking with that and then the dynamic implementation uh, that's uh, that's not I mean I think that's something that I can uh, say that we can finish it before time and uh, uh, the sketch but I mean we were not sure about the, you know, the difficulty level, so we just put it here. Maybe we'll just drag it and paste it in there. 
So you got a schedule, you got boxes, you got dates, and now you can drag and drop the stuff back and forth, right? <laughs> that's the best part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, maybe, I mean, uh, so we, we, we just gave this timing, time of like, I mean, 12, 13, I mean, 12 days uh, for having an for having this implemented, but uh, I mean, I'm not sure about it now. Uh, but I mean, when it comes to this, I think we will have considerable efforts on this, and then we'll be able to do it in 18 days. I mean, we'll, we have just given uh, 18 days for this. I think we'll be able to wrap it up in that time. And uh, so, uh, our, uh, I mean, we are like, we try to look into that and then just have something, uh, some amount of uh, homeworks for that. Uh, and then Skype you edition. After finishing everything, we'll get it. Okay, difficult one, we'll try in that way. Yes, if we find that it'll be easy, we're going to put it in the first house. I think our presentations are on, the final presentations are on May 3rd and May 4th. That's a weekend. No, it's, I'm sorry, it's Thursday and Friday. It's not a weekend, but it's uh, after classes have over. So it's, I guess classes end on Tuesday or Wednesday and then. Thursday and Friday is when I've scheduled these. So, uh, you know, having that milestone of the 25th of April is probably a good idea because that will give you a little bit of flex room. We have to make that. So, uh, in, uh, the canvas as I've given in this uh, as a sketchpad overview. It's not only for that. We can use use these things for like. Why don't more. we? I, I think we should move quickly to the end because we're just about the end of the class period, uh, and you know, sketchpad is interesting, but we don't know yet. The the jury is still out on whether it's going to be reasonable for you to implement or not. Yeah, I'll just talk about the canvas because that's what what we're going to use. So. Uh, the canvas is basically for designing the, uh, you know, it's for just the graphics to draw something on this whole page. Uh, it's, and then, uh, the get context is the method, that's the basic method that we're going to use because that is the object, that gets the object for, you know, the properties and methods for drawing, object for drawing, and then, uh, uh, these are the basic methods that we have to look into. You go to WP school for the canvas, you're going to see all these things. So, uh, these are helpful for just tracking a line, and uh, that is the, thing. and then uh, the exit, I mean, the move to, this is the place where we're gonna work on, so that we're gonna just dynamically, uh, we have to we have to get the move to options, as that the, wherever the mouse is dragged, it's gonna be uh, placed there. Uh, so these are the basic stuffs from Canvas. And these are the sources that we have uh, working on. Any questions or suggestions? We are open to that. I think we've already had, you know, lots of give and take. So good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think we said on uh, Thursday. Uh, let's see. Let me close up again on Thursday. So uh, uh, Lakshmi. Uh, Omkar and Uber. Okay, good. So, and let's chat for a second about when you think we're going to be likely to slow back up. See you all on Thursday. And presenters, uh, upload your stuff today, tonight. The same in which we are in the I can tell. So it just put me a PDF link on my the PDF and the blockchain related basics. Really. I'm not so sure I have all of it. We should really kind of do the blockchain and the system together. Well, I was talking about some 60 minutes ago. I remember saying it was. But that means I didn't rework for 10 days. I mean, we were exploring that. The lovely idea is to be able to do the class now. We'll be able to do the class now.